Hey everybody, Jason Manili, Team Manili here once again, and I am here to wish everybody a happy Halloween. And I'm here to talk to you something about a little bit spooky everybody's worried about right now. So don't be too distracted by my ghost back here, but we're gonna talk about are we in a bubble? And uh, it is on everybody's minds right now. So I'm going to talk about it from a hyper-local perspective just here in Prescott and give you my opinion on the take. Okay, so the question is, are we in a bubble? And I'm gonna give you my personal perspective on a hyper-local level. I'm not an economist, I don't know um, the bigger answer to the whole question, but here in Prescott, I'm gonna give my personal opinion on it. And a lot of people will point to jobs. Jobs are the jobless rate is super duper high right now. Uh, but here for us, um, we are really dependent on a retiree based economy. Most of the people moving here are retirees. They have their pensions and they have their 401ks. And so they're a little bit sheltered from the overall bigger economy and the ability to have and need a job. So in terms of job situation, I don't really feel like that's gonna impact our market that much. Um, and then we talk about forbearances as well. Um, our inventory is really low and which is creates a higher demand and uh, pushes the prices up a little bit higher. But when we're talking about forbearance, um, we already have a, a really healthy rental market here and people are really desperate to rent. So uh, when the forbearance ends and people are potentially being evicted out of their, their houses, I don't think that that's gonna increase our inventory. I don't think landlords are going to go and put the houses back on the market because there's um, not enough uh, demand for their rentals. Uh, you're looking in California, uh, San Francisco, and New York, their rental prices are dropping right now because there's a glut of foreclosures, not foreclosures, there's a glut of rentals. And so that's driving the prices down. Not here. We're having a lot of people looking to rent still because there's not enough houses to buy. People want to be here in the state. All right, so local pressure. Most of you watching this video will know. Um, you're, either, you're either in Prescott or most likely California, and you know the pressure coming to Prescott. There are a ton of people moving here, and the vast majority of them are from California, and the vast majority of them are retirees. And until California changes their policies, um, i.e. lower taxes um, and their gun rights and a lot of their social institutions, people are gonna continue moving here. And that is the vast majority of what I hear. Um, I always lob a softball question in, why are you moving here? And it, it usually comes down to taxes. And oftentimes it comes down to politics and other things along those lines. I, those pressures are going to still be on the state no matter what happens in the election, no matter what happens with the economy. Um, people are fleeing, and I say that, they're fleeing California, they're fleeing New York, and they're fleeing Chicago and cities like that. They're wanting a, a smaller footprint, an easier life, a quieter life, uh, one with less taxes and less uh, government interference, and that is, <clears throat> excuse me, something that I see uh, very, very often right now. And so. Um, we are seeing a big demographic shift and they, a lot of older people, retirees, are leaving either the cities and, and uh, the coastlines and coming to, to Arizona and Nevada, Texas, Idaho, places like that. So I don't think we're going to see any change coming from that anytime soon. The next point I want to make is that in the pre-2008, before the crash, uh, we were selling houses with subprime loans. I mean, a ton of subprime loans. 0% um, down, uh, take an equity out of one house and buy another house. Um, and when we were doing that, we were buying houses that were overvalued and we had access to the appraisers. And we could tell the appraiser that, hey, this is what the value of the house has sold for, this is what we need it to be, and, and we could oftentimes influence the appraiser to do just that. Um, now we can't do that. Um, uh, thanks to the Dodd-Frank Act and 
we have an arm's length transaction between appraisers, realtors, and lenders, and we have to make sure that um, the appraiser can do their job without undue influence uh, from the lender and from the from the uh, realtor involved. And so we, along with that, we see people putting down their 20, 30, 40, 50 percent, and or paying with cash. And so we, we're seeing a bigger chunk of equity in the houses that were being sold. Um, there's only a couple of lending products out there that are doing the 0%, uh, the VA and the USDA. And those, the USDA are agricultural loans and they kind of push them further out into uh, less sparsely populated areas. So we're not really seeing uh, a lot of those issues right now. So I think the equity that people are keeping in their houses is going to um, keep us from that bubble from bursting. Now, I'm not gonna say there's not gonna be a correction. There's always a correction, right? Every 10 years or so, we see a correction. Um, I just don't see, I don't see the bubble bursting in quite the way a lot of people are predicting. I think that we will see a correction, but not a massive decrease in values. And, and I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, nobody wants to see their values uh, go away in all their houses. Um, in 2000, through 2008 through 12, I saw 50% decrease in the value of my house. I don't see that happening again. I could be wrong. Again, like I said, I'm not an economist and, uh, and I hope that we can you know, continue on the path of not giving subprime loans, people having skin in the game and you know, putting a good chunk of money down on their house. And so hopefully all that continues and we keep moving on. We are seeing a huge increase in values right now and I don't think that is healthy. If we can go back to that five to 7% growth, um, that's, a healthy, that's a healthy trend and that's where we were up until uh, maybe six months ago. Uh, but now as of October, 2020, we are seeing massive gains on a month to month level. And, um, and the, one, the one other aspect of this, and I will say, I don't think that we are seeing flippers in the market yet. We used to see flippers in 2005 and six and seven, buy a house, hold on to it for two or three months, not do anything to it and then flip it make $20,000, $30,000, right? And we, we're not seeing that right now. We're seeing flips, but they're typically undervalued houses that need lots of work and, and then they're doing the work and, and then putting them back on the market. We're not quite seeing that right now. So I'm hoping we're in a good position. I'm hoping that we're not gonna see a bubble burst for a while yet. Um, our economy um, is missing a couple of things. You know, Our jobs are a little low and obviously the pandemic is really affecting us, but I hoping that when the pandemic is over, we get back to normal, jobs start coming back, we see uh, huge growth, and so we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this helps you understand the Prescott market a little bit better, gives you a little more confidence to buy in the Prescott market. And um, if you guys have any questions, please reach out. Um, if you like these videos at all, please subscribe, check out our Facebook page or Instagram or any of those other ones. So hope all is well. We'll talk to you soon and uh, happy Halloween again.